We are thrilled to be able to have our first concert in two years, to, um, to have our suffragist Mary Morris Lockwood recognized. During today's performance of songs by our students and by our various speakers, if you're not familiar with Mary Morris Lockwood, you will learn a lot about her today. And at the end of our program, we will reveal her plaque that will be up here forever and ever more because she and her husband, Henry, actually lived on our property, probably about where our relocatables are. So I'd like to start off by thanking Nancy Tate because she has just been incredible in the work she's done and including us in a part of honoring Mary Morris Lockwood. What could be more important in this time than to have the freedom to vote and to not have barriers to voting? So again, we are very excited to begin. Please join me in the saying of the Pledge of Allegiance of the United States of America and then the singing of our Star Spangled Banner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And to our many honored guests who are with us today, as we journey through the program today, we will have many introductions, but none more important than our superintendent, Dr. Francisco Duran, and we ask that he come up and make comments at this time. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today on an exciting day, and I think it's an important note to recognize this is Women's History Month. And so what an honor for Arlington Public Schools, for our ASF family, and for our community partners. I really want to thank Nancy Tate for your leadership in this. Please give her a round of applause. I remember I, one of my, my first month or two here getting an email about this partnership and wanting to do this work with uh, APS, and we were so honored to be able to join you in that. I want to thank you, Mary Bagley, our principal, for all your leadership in putting this together. Let's give her a round of applause. So as we honor women's history, how important is it not just to talk about women's history, but to actually help our students learn and understand the importance. And for many of us out here, our adults, many of us, we have family members, uh, grandparents, parents who actually were alive when women did not have the right to vote. But for our younger generation, they have not experienced that and seen that. So it's important that we continue to teach them about that history and the power of that 
right here in our own neighborhood, right here on this school's ground. So what many of you may not have heard of Mary Lockwood, but after today, I hope that you learn about her as well and share that story forward. This is just an exciting, again, opportunity in APS. We are all about connecting with our families and our students and our community to make history come alive. An amazing history this is. So again, thank you for being here. It is an honor to be here, and it is an honor for APS to be a partner in recognizing such an outstanding Arlingtonian whose students for many, many years will get to learn about and get to see as they drive in every day. What a reminder for us. Let's not just have this be a plaque, Ms. Begley. Let's have this be a constant lesson in all of our lessons here at ASF. And we're also going to make sure that all students in Arlington Public Schools learn about Mary Lockwood and the importance of what it is to be a true Arlingtonian standing up for those who don't have a voice and making sure everyone does have a voice. So with that, I thank you for allowing me to be here to celebrate in this honor. And I'll turn it back to you, Ms. Begley, because I think most of us want to hear more about our students and learn about Mary Lockwood. So thank you for having me this morning. Welcome to our many distinguished guests, ASFS families, staff and students in fourth and fifth grades. For most of us gathered here today, it is difficult to envision a time when girls and women had few opportunities in America, a time when their world was restricted almost completely to the home and family. Today we take for granted our right to go to school just as boys do. We take for granted our ability to go to college. We take for granted our right to choose a career that suits our passions, interests, and talents, whatever they may be. And we take for granted our right to vote as adults. But let's pause for a moment today. Let's pause to recognize that these essential rights and choices in life were not always ours, nor were these rights easily gained. In fact, history tells us, this is, history tells us that this was far from the case. Gaining the vote for American women, known as women's suffrage, took more than 70 years of persistent dedication and struggle on the part of millions of women and men. The efforts of some of these women would be recognized in history. Hence, over the past month, we have learned about the courageous efforts of women such as Elizabeth Cady Stanton. As a young girl in the 1800s, she learned, she learned from her father, who was a lawyer and judge, that the laws was not the same for men and women and that women had very few legal rights. She helped to organize the first women's right convention in Seneca Falls, New York in 1848. Similarly, we have learned about Lucretia Mott, who worked to abolish slavery and obtain voting rights for women. As early as 1866, Mott became president of the American right Equal Rights Association. This group worked for equal rights, especially voting rights, for all Americans. Sojourner Truth, a former slave, also became famous both as an abolitionist and an activist for women's suffrage. In 1851, she made her famous speech, Ain't I a Woman?, at a convention in Akron, Ohio. These are only a handful of the women who made their mark in history as they fought to obtain the right to vote for women. However, none of them would live long enough to see women obtain the legal right to vote. 72 long years after the Seneca Falls Convention, women would finally obtain the right to vote in 1920 in the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. Thank you. And I want to first bring you greetings from the full school board. Vice Chair Reed Goldstein is here with us. And I just want to share greetings from our members, Christina Diaz-Torres, David Pretty, and Mary Cadera. So you've, you've already been welcomed once, but let me say again, welcome to Arlington F Science Focus School, or as Mary Morris Lockwood would have called it, her home. It was called Kirkwood in the Clarendon neighborhood of Alexandria County. Ms. Lockwood moved here in 1904, 16 years before the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, providing women with the right to vote. I have to admit I never expected as a school board member to stand before an audience to celebrate an Arlington women's suffragist. It is just not an everyday occurrence for school board members, but we are thrilled to be the site of Mary Lockwood's home and thrilled to honor her during Women's History Month. I want to thank the National Collaborative for Women's History Sites for including Mary Lockwood in the National Votes for Women Trail. And thank you to all of our partners who are here today. I think we have members of the Arlington Historical Society, the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington, Arlington government officials, as well as many fans and champions of Arlington history, women's history, and women's rights. Mary Lockwood founded the Alexandria County 
now of course Arlington County, branch of the Equal Suffrage League. And she became an active member in the Congressional Union for Women, known as the National Women's Party. She served as treasurer and raised money for the suffrage, suffrage cause and published and printed suffrage literature. Ms. Lockwood marched in parades, attended events, hosted a dance fundraiser in her home, lobbied on Capitol Hill, and was once arrested while picketing outside the White House. Though she was able to appeal her sentence and did not serve any prison time, as some women suffragists did. In a time when women of her station were full-time homemakers, she chaired a committee to coordinate public luncheons. She wanted to show that women could be part of the movement while still providing nice home-cooked meals. After the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920, Ms. Lockwood remained active in a number of ways. In 1921, the Republican Party nominated her as their candidate for a seat in the Virginia House of Delegates. She lost that election, but she remained active in a number of ways. As a continuing member of the National Women's Party, she lobbied for an Equal Rights Amendment. She also continued to work in the, in the areas of public health and an Arlington favorite, developing the public library. Woo, Ms. Crash is here. It's an honor to be here today, celebrating with all of you the extraordinary life of Mary Lockwood. Now, with this historical marker, our students here at Science Focus and across Arlington will know just a bit more about how one Arlingtonian stood up for what she believed in and how we can all contribute toward a better, more inclusive community and country. Thank you. Neri has told us the story of a few famous women who fought for women's rights. However, just as important are these many ordinary women and men who also participated in the effort to gain women's right to vote. These are the unsung heroes, people who took it upon themselves to play a part in making our country a place of opportunity for women too. For this reason, we celebrate Mary Morris Lockwood today. While not as famous as Susan B. Anthony or many other suffragists, Mary Lockwood demonstrates the important role every individual can play in prompting equal rights. Living right here on the property of ASFS, Ms. Lockwood established a local bank branch of the Equal Suffrage League in 1912. She participated in the 1913 suffrage parades in Washington, D.C. and New York City. She organized events and marches in Virginia and Washington, D.C., hosted fundraisers, and lobbied federal lawmakers. In 1917, Lockwood bravely picketed the White House at the risk of being arrested. Lockwood reminds us that every individual can play a role in changing our society for the better, and that includes each and every one of us here today. Thank you very much, Aroha. You'll also notice that we have some picket signs up here. Dr. Duran, we're not gonna demonstrate. Uh, <laughs> But we'd like to thank our art department for working with our fifth grade students as we've incorporated um, our study of Virginia history and women's rights with our arts. And uh, as Dr. Duran was saying, this is arts month as well as women in history. So we're seeing a vocal, we're seeing visual, and we're also studying about women's rights. So to our faculty, thank you all so very much. You have really embraced this and you have worked very hard with our students. And of course, to all of our fourth and fifth grade students, I'm very proud of you and the work that you've been doing. And I know you're going to miss our daily practices after lunch of our song. <laughs> This is a tribute song to Mary Morris Lockwood. The students are under the direction of Michelle Scheinflaus and Michael Basse, and we you want to give credit where credit is due. This is to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy, but we have incorporated some of the things that the students have learned about Mary Morris Lockwood, and they will be singing that tribute to you. Thank you, Mary Morris Lockwood. 
I think Mary Morris Lockwood would be very excited at that tribute to her. Today, we'd like to highlight Nancy Tate and the work that she has done. Nancy Tate is the Virginia State Coordinator for the National Votes for Women Trail, a project of the National Collaborative for Women's History Sites. She is also the co-chair of the Women's Vote Centennial Initiative, an organization focused on commemorating the 100th anniversary of women running the constitutional right to vote. Ms. Tate has also served as a board member of the Turning Point Suffrage Memorial. Previously, Ms. Tate served for 15 years as the executive director of the League of Women Voters of the United States, a national nonpartisan organization engaged in education and advocacy for voters. The League was founded by suffragists in 1920 and is the only remaining successor organization to that equal rights movement. Ms. Tate and her husband are 42 year residents of Arlington County, where her two daughters attended Arlington Public Schools. She is active in the Arlington League of Women Voters, as well as other nonprofit and county government committees. Most of these people who are, who've done so much here did not even, had never even heard of Mary Lockwood or the fact she was getting a marker earlier than four months ago. So this has all come together very recently. The process started though a year and a half ago when Chief of Staff Brian Stockwood accepted my out of the blue call asking if, if they would support my effort to get a marker for this school. So it's been in the works, it's taken a long time, but this is just a fabulous celebration. So I have spent the last few years trying to share the inspiring but little told story of women fighting to get the vote and the final ratification of the 19th Amendment. I think it's safe to say that most of us adults standing around were not taught about this story in school. Women had virtually no rights in this country for at least the first 200 years. And the idea of voting was never seriously considered until 1848. And after that, it took 72 years of organized struggle and campaigns to make it happen. And that included 900 different state and federal campaigns to get legislators to pass either state or federal laws. I cite the number 900 because that shows how many times those campaigns failed and the women had to start over and try again. And it took fighting for suffrage against all sorts of opposition from, from many different quarters through World War I and through uh, international pandemic. The suffrage movement was mostly led by white women, such as Mary Lockwood, but it also included African-American and Asian women, Latinas, and a number of men. The 19th Amendment does not ensure women's right to vote, but it provides a constitutional guarantee that the right to vote may not be denied on the basis of sex. When it was ratified in August of 1920, it was the greatest expansion of democracy on a single day in US history and in most of world history. However, other barriers still exist to voting for both women and men today, so the social justice work continues. Mary Lockwood began her advocacy wor work on voting here in Arlington in 1912. And you have already heard from several speakers who've covered the details of her life. She was particularly active in the, what became the National Women's Party and agreeing with their approach that constant agitation, I use that phrase, was the best way to get legislators to pay attention to the cause. The March in 1913 here in Washington, D.C. was very significant. There was at least 8,000 women marching uh, until actually the men pushed him out of the way. But anyway, it was a, it was a very significant effort r right here in our general area. At age, in 1917, at age 46, she became one of the silent sentinels who stood in front of the White House, picketing, holding, wearing banners or holding signs saying, Mr. President, how long must women wait for liberty? And at that point in time, in 1917, women uh, there were uh, women had been able had been granted the right to vote in 11 states 
because that was an effort that was going on at the same time. But the outlook in Virginia was bleak. The General Assembly killed every proposal that came before it for state voting rights, and they refused to ratify the 19th Amendment. The strong opposition in the General Assembly was based on racism. Jim Crow laws in Virginia were already in effect that were disenfranchising African-American men. But even in this hostile environment, suffragists in Virginia, like Mary Lockwood, worked hard to continue to, win, to try to win that right to vote. There were over 145 chapters of the Equal Suffrage League all around Virginia and 20,000 members, at least. And those efforts and more that we don't even know about included not only white women, but a number of black women as well, and, and men as well. They even had their own men's Equal Suffrage League. So doing all that against the odds shows real courage and determination. So Mary Lockwood's contribution to the, the federal amendment has affected all of our lives. But as you've heard, she's also made a lot of contributions to her own local community here in Arlington. And she, we, we've heard about those through the women's club movement, through uh, being one of the founders of St. George's Episcopal Church, working hard for the public library and serving on that board and running for the state legislature. So as one of our speakers has already said, Mary Lockwood's life shows the way that any individual can touch the lives of so many other people, often without even knowing it. In anticipation of the 2020 suffrage centennial, many different organizations began to tell the full story of women striving to get the right to vote. And there are representatives from some of these groups here today. And for one thing, I can see Pat Worth, so please stand when I call each of you. Pat Worth, who's been the CEO of the Turning Point Suffragist Memorial in Lorton, Virginia. This is a great field trip opportunity for, for students. Um, <laughs> she always comes, and then she's in, in her period dress. And one of those groups was the National Collaborative for Women's History Sites, who initiated the idea of a National Votes for Women trail. And the purpose is to identify sites in every state, showing that everywhere across the country, in urban areas as well as rural areas, suffrage efforts were going on. And they were being conducted by women and men of many different cultures and backgrounds. And their major product has been an online map that now contains 2,300 sites around the country. You can see that if you go to their website. But in addition to that, they got a limited amount of funding from the Pomeroy Foundation to create and provide free roadside markers for special places. It had to be a place where something significant had happened or where a significant person had lived. It had to be a place that wasn't already known. The whole idea was to bring more attention to how large this movement was and how widespread. And it had to be something that could be well documented. There are only 200 of these around the country. So out of those 2,300 sites that have been identified, only roughly a little over 200 have qualified for such a marker. And this is one of them. Uh, yay! This is, this is one of only two in the state of Virginia, and it's the first one that we're dedicating. And I really doubt that the next one is gonna be able to pull off an event like this. But I have to say that the degree of research that was needed to document to, to find individuals like Mary Lockwood, document her accomplishments, and then pinpoint a location where she lived, that took a tremendous amount of work. And honestly, I would not have been able to do that without the help of work already done by the Library of Virginia. And the, the curator there, uh, Mary Julian, where, please stand up, Mary. Um, you really owe a lot of thanks to this woman. Uh, she made that, she, she's done that work She's come all the way up from uh, Richmond today to be with us. So thank you, Mary. But after the 19th Amendment passed, many ch challenges still remained in Virginia. There were still many rules, stringent rules about registering and voting. We often refer to them as Jim Crow laws, including poll taxes, literacy tests, and property requirements. These kind of laws suppressed overall vo voter turnout in Virginia for many decades but they were aimed at and specifically disenfranchised African-American men and women. The National League of Women Voters was created by the suffragists in 1920 
to continue the fight. The Equal Suffrage League of Virginia became the League of Women Voters of Virginia, and local chapters of the League were set up around the country, including here in Arlington. The mission then is, is the same as the mission now, to educate people on the issues, to help them know what they need to do to, to register and to vote, and to conduct advocacy for voting rights and other issues. And I'm very happy to see a number of members of our Arlington League here today. So ladies, if you would stand. And men, we have at least one uh, male member here of the League. So yay, let's hear it for the Arlington League. So in conclusion, and because I'm standing here in front of a school, I'm going to say, what can we learn from Mary Lockwood and the suffrage movement more broadly? Well, here are a few of my thoughts. Number one, history matters. Knowing what came before broadens our understanding of who we are and who we can become. Number two, every individual can make a difference, whether it be in their own community or on a larger stage. Number three, but it's important to remember that perseverance is important. Change can be hard and long, but determination and perseverance will win out. And finally, the vote for equality is not over. It needs to be fought in every generation. If Mary Lockwood and her fellow suffragists could accomplish what they did without social media, without any of the technology that we have today, what could each of us do to work towards greater equality for all. So with those thoughts in mind, and on behalf of the National Collaborative for Women's History Sites, I am very honored to present this commemorative marker for Mary Lockwood to the Arlington Science Focus School and to the larger Arlington community. I hope everyone will be able to enjoy it for years to come. So I say thank you. I want to thank again this wonderful group of students for embracing this. I love your, your, uh, your banners, your, your banners, your sashes, everything. So I guess we can proceed, um, Mary, to, do we get to do the unveiling now? Okay, let's do it. Hi.